G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up a HP Pavilion gaming desktop. This one has a model number of TG01-0717A. And if I take out the single Phillips head screw over here, or at least it may be Phillips head, this one is fairly reluctant to come out. You may need a torque screw or a flathead screwdriver. Probably a flathead screwdriver, actually, if memory serves me correctly. Let me slide this back, and we're in. Looking inside here, I'm going to cover the various upgrade options that are available for you with this particular machine. We have an Intel 9th Gen processor in here. This particular one has an i7-9700. So this one here is not really upgradable. But if you have an i3 or i5 version, you may be able to upgrade it to a newer 9th Gen series. You won't be able to upgrade it to a 10th gen or an 11th for anything like that. You've got to stick within the 9000 series. So with that, it should be relatively straightforward to get in there. I'm going to use a torque screwdriver and an extension to be able to reach it. And I'm going to use something like this. You may be able to get away with a flathead screwdriver. But I find that these tend to work reasonably well if I'm using the right bit. This one is not that. Uh, what's this one? A T10. This one's a bit remote. Yep. That one is a loosening it up just fine. While I'm here, I'm not upgrading the processor, but this will show you the steps on how to upgrade it. And also, while I'm in there, I'm gonna replace the thermal paste on here as well hopefully get this to run a little bit better than what it already is. This one, I'm not sure how much it would have costed when it, or cost when it was first released, but now it is showing a bit of age to it. There we go. Sadly, with this particular model, there's gonna be very little you can do to upgrade the cooling on, this, on the processor, which definitely is a bit sad, as the typical Intel cooler pushes through the board, this one's already got its own screws on it. So sadly, I've, I believe there is certain adapters you can get that do adapt to this to like an AMD cooler or something to that effect, or their style of brackets, but I'm yet to personally come across that. To clean off the thermal paste, I'm gonna use some tissue paper, some isopropyl alcohol, and give that a wipe over on here, like so. Now let's say you were to upgrade the processor, you would move this latch over to the side, let go, let it spring up, then lift up this bottom bit here, and then from there, we'll lift out the processor. So for example, I'll just pinch here and here, pull it forward, lift up, and that would be one processor out of there. To put that in, we do need to take note of these little notches on the sides, here and here, and they correspond with up on the board itself, on the socket itself. Typically I like to line it up with that first in that corner, and then drop down, give it a little nudge, shouldn't really go anywhere. If it's not going anywhere, you should be right to put this latch down, pull the lever up. We want to get it under this bit just here. So if you can see that one, under there, pull the lever down, should get it some fair bit of pressure, and then you've got to push it under this little metal bit just here. And that should be locked into position. As we can see, we've still got the pattern from the factory thermal paste along here. So this has never been changed. So if I just put some isopropyl alcohol on here, and try and clean this off. There's a fair bit on there to clean. Okay, looking nice and clean from there. Now what I'm just gonna do here is put some thermal paste on the processor. Let's go down here. I'm using some Arctic Silver 5, it's called. And I'll squeeze that down. Go in a bit of a circle. I'm just kind of smearing it as I go around it. 
go. Most flannel pastes are either silver or white. I'm not sure why this one's coming out brown. I guess that was the batch of the day. No, I say Arctic Silver. Yeah, Arctic Silver 5. Anyway, put that on there. Next up, I'm going to connect the fan header here. The fan header here to up here. As you can see it here, there's a notch. Take it. There's these two little leg bits here and here. They correspond with the header. It should be a matter of lining up the screw holes, the threads with the holes down there. Like so. And then tighten and work your way around. So I'm not going full tightness, I'm just slowly working my way around. There we go, we're moving here as well, over to this one. So I like to get them to about 70 to 90% torque down and then work my way back around to do that final little bit. Okay. While we're here, make sure you don't forget to reconnect your fan header. Granted, the laptop, uh, the desktop will probably complain if you don't. So it should just slide over and those four pins should slot together. You can kind of see it there, like so. Next up, you're probably wondering, storage-wise. Storage-wise, we have a 3.5 inch drive here. This particular one's a 250 gig. So I'd say the customer would put that in there at some point, as it probably would have come with a much larger drive at some point. So that there, you could upgrade to a, either a larger capacity 3.5 inch drive, be it three, four, eight terabyte, whatever size, or a 2.5 inch SSD could also go in this exact location. Looking here, I'll just try and figure out how this comes off here. Yeah, I'm not seeing any screws. Let's say it must slide or pop. Come by the arrow here, it's saying go forward. Does that mean go back? If I pull here, come off. Another point of topic. If you do want to reshell the computer, I would highly recommend against it, as all the front I.O. is part of the mainboard. So all this is part of the case. So if you do try to replace it, A, you're not going to find a standard case for this to go into, and B, the power supply on it is proprietary. Looking over here, this screw here looks to hold in the drive tray. I should be able to use that same screwdriver that I used to take out the CPU core. Take this screw out. There we go. And this should lift up and out. What do we see from here? What do we see? We see a wireless card slash Bluetooth down the front here. We see the CMOS battery that helps save the date and time in the CMOS settings. And we see an NVMe drive here. So that could potentially be upgraded. All we need is a small Phillips head screwdriver to take out the black screw. It will lift up and I should just be able to pull that backwards towards me. There we go. We have one drive removed. This particular one here, if we can see a model number on it. No, I'm not really seeing too much there. Is a one terabyte NVMe drive. I'm not really seeing a brand on there. It's an Intel brand of some variety. But that particular one, I'll put back in for now. Oop, my bad. Should be able to line it up into that slot, like so. Then push down. Put your screw back in. Now if you are replacing your NVMe drive, either you'd have to clone it prior to putting the new one in, or do a fresh reinstall of Windows afterwards. Moving on, we have graphics card. This one I believe is an RTX 2060. Flip this latch over from here. Push the tab down the bottom down here. And then pull up. And that should release it. This one here is not looking too good. Looking at the dust down here. 
and looking at the dust collected on the slot there. I will give this a dust blowout in a moment. This one here has a single 8 pin power. And I believe the power requirements on the 2060s are relatively low, up to about 600 watts, I think, off the top of my head. Which brings me, or actually, it would be even lower. Why is that, you ask? Because if I look, have a look at the power supply down here, which I can't quite get into the frame, I'll rotate it differently. If we go to the power supply over here, this is only a 400 watt gold plus power supply. Basically, we're not really going to be able to change this too much. You may be able to get like an RX 6600 in there, or maybe a 3050 if you're lucky, but you certainly would not be replacing this with like a 20, 70, 30, 70, 30, 60 Ti, 30, 60. They're all going to struggle a fair bit and be fairly starved of power, especially with it being power heavily, or being that most power, um, graphics cards nowadays are wanting a fair bit of power. The other dilemma we've got though, being we're a proprietary plug, we have our standard four pin over here, but over here we've got the main board plug. So we've got one here for the main board, two here for the main board. Oh, and we've got this one here going off the main board to our SATA power. So we have a proprietary style of connection. There may be adapters in, available to convert to this four pin over here and to the other four pin up here. And at least then you may be able to upgrade your power supply. Do note though, if you upgrade your power supply, the hole here is different. So you're not going to be able to fit a standard ATX power supply in there. So you're fairly restricted on what graphics card upgrades you can do because of the power restraints. So overall that is not too crash hot there. Anyway, that covers the vast majority of the HP Pavilion gaming. Hopefully this helps you, or actually, lastly, almost forgot, RAM. Looking down here, these tabs click out of the way, up the top as well, and then this pulls out. Right now we've got a single stick of DDR4 2666 16 gig. Upgrading it to faster RAM is not really going to change much as the i, or the ninth gen. The 9th gen processors don't really react well to faster RAM unlike the Ryzen processors. So even if you, I would probably go a maximum of 3200 megahertz, there's no point exceeding that. Even the 3200 megahertz is not really going to yield you better performance. What will though, is if you install the same size RAM slot in, uh, stick in each slot. So for example, if we had this single 8 in here, or we had two uh, single 16 and had two 8s, the two eights will usually yield you better gaming performance by between about, up to about 10%. So what I'd be recommending if you've got 16 gig in here is would be to adding another 16 gig, even though yes, you are increasing your RAM, but gaming performance will increase just because both slots are utilized and it's utilizing two sticks of RAM, not just one. To reinstall this back in, see this notch here, there's a notch down here. We've got to match them up. So if the tabs pulled outwards like so, push it into the groove, push down, that click noise generally means it's installed. It shouldn't rock when you push on it, if, you've, if it rocks a bit when you push it, or it tilts up and down, you've got it around the wrong way. I'd start with this slot, then that's the slot that it came out of, but if you've got two equally sized sticks, put them both in. Anyway, that now covers the HP Pavilion Gaming. Hope this helps, and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.